Welcome to The Lake Show, where you can find out what's going on in and around the lake. This show is brought to you by Fort Loudon Lake Association, a nonprofit environmental conservation organization that keeps Fort Loudon Lake safe, clean, and fun. I'm Angela Howard, the Executive Director, and I work with zone managers and an in-house scientist who remove trash and debris daily, educate our community on pollution prevention, monitor stormwater, and manage the health of our streams. Today I have one of our zone managers, Kirk. Hi. He's been on our show before, but you can never get enough from you guys. You do a lot out there. And in fact, would you like to tell them, the, again, what Fort Loudon Lake is, you know, the, the parameters, and then the actual area or zone that you work in? Fort Loudon Lake covers 50 miles. It starts at the forks of the river where the Holston and the French Broad come together and goes down to the Lenore City Dam. Mm -hmm. And we have that area split into eight zones. Zone one and two is in downtown Knoxville. We refer to that as the no trash zone. Mm -hmm. And we focus on uh, d uh, first, second, and third creek flow into the river there. And we try to remove litter and debris as it enters the lake mm -hmm. right there at the source. And zone three through eight is the lower part. And that's the zones that I generally cover. And... Um, there we focus more on removing logs and dangerous items for boaters and skiers and things like that. Yeah, and if we do our job, tell me if this is right, if we do our job really well in the first and second zone, maybe three through eight wouldn't have it so bad, but they still get stuff going into Well, the that's area. the main producers of the litter. The mm -hmm. logs kind of float around and they come from a wide source, but the litter is mainly produced um, in the city. So I know you guys are out there five days a week and picking up scooping up trash and, and getting the, the large objects out of the way so boats won't run over, skiers won't run over, swimmers won't run into them. But I know there's other things that you all do that some people may not know about. Do you have a story about something that may, may be something that is out of the norm? Well, I've brought a couple of pictures to share with everyone today. Uh, this is a picture of a blue herring that I rescued last summer. And... Um, I don't think fishermen, they, they don't litter in the lake very often, but old fishing line is very dangerous to all marine life, birds in particular. And I found this blue herring and he was trapped in some fishing line. And so I pulled up and I, I scooped him out of the water uh, with a net and I was a little worried that he was going to bite me. He was, he was freaking out. <laughs> it looks like he's kind of happy you got him out. But uh, I, I got, his, got him untangled and the line was wrapped <laughs> around his wing. And there you can see him in the background on the bank. And I don't know if he made it, but I put him back on the shore and removed that mess from the tree. And we find tons of fishing line on the shoreline. Um, people get hung and, and they, they, uh, they leave their line laying around. And not only is it dangerous to animals, but it's also dangerous to, uh, or causes problems for boaters. It can get tangled up in your uh, prop shaft and um, it's an expensive repair. Well, you were a boat mechanic one time, weren't you? Right. And still are, for us. And so tell us what, I mean, so you get this thing stuck in your, your um, propeller, what happens to your wallet? Well, if a uh, fishing line <laughs> gets wrapped around your propeller shaft, it can work its way through the prop seal, and then uh, the oil, the gear lube that's in your lower unit, leaks into the lake. Oh, and, more uh, pollution. And so, right. So then you get water into your lower unit, and the gear's... Explode. And about basically. how much is this, cost-wise? I don't know, fifteen hundred bucks or so. Oh, okay, just a small, small penance <laughs> if, if people just. It, it's an expensive line. repair if it happens. So you're also talking about somebody being careless, or people, you know, a certain group being careless. That little bit of carelessness taken into a situation makes a major problem for a boater, for a bird, for anybody who might get caught up in it, or kids maybe playing down might get stuck in it. So just one act of carelessness can actually set off a whole slew of different bad happenings, which leads me into the next thing that we wanted to talk about. Um, one of the creeks that feed into Lake Loudon is First Creek, right. and that's the one that comes down from um, Broadway, from right. Fountain City. And I believe you have some pictures about how that creek, and I think it's one of our probably most polluted creeks, am I right to say that? It's one of the biggest litter producers okay. as far as putting trash into the water. So, and you have some pictures on, on how that happens. I do. This first photo is a parking lot, and 
this is just a good example of how litter starts on the side of the street somewhere or in a parking lot and eventually works its way into the stream and then into the lake. So again, it's carelessness of somebody who thinks their, their McDonald's cup on the parking lot or something thrown out or even cigarette butts emptying those ashtrays out onto the, to the parking lot, they probably think that, that oh, what does it matter? It won't go anywhere. 90% of the things we remove are plastic cups, uh, plastic bottles, and styrofoam cups. This is another example of a parking lot, and you can see where the stormwater uh, funnels straight down into the stream, but if the parking lots aren't maintained properly and, and litter is left sitting around in the parking lot, it eventually makes it into the water. This is another example. You can see on the other side of the stream where the parking lot funnels directly down into the creek. Oh, looks like they designed it that way. Well, the, for, for the stormwater, you know, it has to be that way. But the point is that if the parking lots aren't maintained and businesses don't take time to, to clean their parking lots, then the trash that's left behind ends up in the stream. And is that some sort of, in that last picture, was that a boom? It was. That was a boom that's up near Fountain City. It's uh, made out of milk jugs by school uh, school children, and then we wrap it with a type of fencing material, and then we use that to catch litter. Hmm. So one of the things I've been asking some of the other people in our organization is, what's the one thing that we can do, if we had to boil it down to one thing, to help prevent pollution? You asked me last time I was on this show what I would like to see Fort Loudon Lake, 10 years from now or what my vision would be and my answer of course was I'd like to see less litter, less logs, um, just a safer lake to provide a more hassle-free boating experience for people. But as I've had time to think about that question, you know, I, uh, I ran into a fisherman a few weeks ago while I was working and, and he told me that when he moved to Tennessee that he was really shocked at the amount of litter on the side of our highways. And he said that in Texas, his home state, there was, there were more um, strict penalties for littering. Mm -hmm. And um, it bothered me to hear someone that's not from here say that. And, you know, the more I thought about that, I, I had to admit that he was right. And I've taken quite a few road trips out west with my father-in-law over the years. And I admit, as we drive across country, I will say that Tennessee has better, better roads than a lot of the states I've driven through. Arkansas and, <laughs> and uh, yeah so but we have a litter problem mm -hmm. and the litter problem in the lake will never get better if we don't have stricter law enforcement on on the roads for littering mm -hmm. and um, you know I would like to see stiffer penalties for littering and possibly you know maybe the funds that come from littering penalties put into a grant or something like that to help fund nonprofit organizations like us mm -hmm. who are out there all the time. Picking up what they have picking, done. Picking people. up trash, right. So, so sort of keep that money in circulation with people who fight the problem. Mm -hmm. How do we, that's a great idea, and maybe somebody on this show will pick that up and, and go with it, you know, to enforce the no, no littering, but it's hard to catch people and, and then to find them. But what can we do? What do you think would happen if people knew exactly what happens to their litter? Again, that, that I said the person in the parking lot or the fisherman that cuts his, his line didn't know that he may be hurting a heron. So how can we get to these people? That's a good question. I, I don't think people are very conscious or it's kind of an impulse thing when they do it. Mm -hmm. You know, no one wants to injure a bird or a child when he's playing on the water in the water. But... You know, I just think stricter, stricter enforcement and just a more conscious effort by the community mm -hmm. to take care of, of, take pride in our community, basically, not just our city, but our entire state. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that, you know, Mike, our scientist, who we're now calling Dr. Mike, was on a, another show, and he's one of our education monitors and uh, our education guy. And um, one of the things that, that we do is educate our community on how not to pollute our pollution prevention programs and I've let the audience know that they can and they can hire us to come into their civic organizations churches schools and teach these programs because you have kids right and you know how your kids influence you right sure they do right they, they you have to go where they tell you to go right well we figured that if we educate the kids 
they're going to make it very hard for their parents to, to pollute. Do you think that's right? think that's a good... Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, kids learn recycling projects at school. They come home, you know, they want their parents to have a recycling container, things like that, or... It'd be cool. It'd be nice if it was cool to be green. You know, why don't you be like the other parents instead of, you know, let me stay out later. Why don't you, why don't you recycle? Why don't we recycle? I, I think that could, could have a trickle-down effect if the kids learn it at school and then they bring it home and, and um, have an influence on the parents. Mm -hmm. So we, we're educating the adults to stop littering. We're educating the children to never start littering. And then with this new grant that you've come up with <laughs> for the people who actually do litter and get fined, they fund organizations like us to go out and pick it up and keep it clean for the rest of the world. I think that's a great idea. I'd love to see it happen. That's kind of a cyclical thing. It'd be a perfect world. Would that be your perfect world? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but it would be a little better. Well, it would make your job easier, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. Right. Well, Kirk, thank you so much for being on our show. And I want to thank all of you all for joining us today. And remember, I boiled it down to what we do on a daily basis. We're REM, my favorite band. We remove trash and debris daily. We educate the community on pollution prevention. And we monitor the stormwater and the health of our streams. So there's two ways you can help us out, by donating. You can donate at flake.org, which is um, down on your screen right there. You can call us, ask us about other programs. We'd love for you to volunteer. We have a lot of cleanup programs during the year. Please find out. And the way you can find out very easily is to join our mailing list. We have a newsletter you can join on the website, and you'll get one, one letter a, a month just letting you know what we got going on. But call us, let us know that you've seen the show. Call us and let us know that you appreciate what we do, and remember to donate. Thanks very much.